Welcome to MedCrime and today we shall be covering the part photocirculation physiology. To start with, let's have a look at the normal blood flow to the gastrointestinal tract or the gut. The gastrointestinal tract and its accessory organs usually receive the arterial blood supply from the abdominal outer. The branches of the outer to supply these organs include celiac artery, the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. The blood flow to the gastrointestinal tract, liver, spleen and pancreas is collectively known as the splanchnic circulation. We have two large cavitated beds that are partly in the series with one another and that's the small splanchnic arterial branches that supply the capillaries in gastrointestinal tract, liver, spleen and the pancreas. From these capillary beds, Venous blood flows into the port of vein, providing most of the blood flow to the liver. The hepatic artery supplies the liver with the oxygenated blood. And then, what's the normal blood supply to the liver? The hepatic artery proper usually arises from the common hepatic artery and supplies the liver in the gallbladder. This hepatic artery proper or proper hepatic artery runs along with the port of vein and the common bile duct to form what's known as the portal triad. The right hepatic artery usually gives off its cystic artery that runs through the neck of the gallbladder and the blood vessels conveying blood to the liver are usually the hepatic artery that accounts for 30% of the blood and the portal vein or the hepatic portal vein that accounts for 70% of the total blood supplying the liver. The hepatic artery brings oxygenated blood to the liver and the port of vein brings venous blood that is rich in products of digestion that has been absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. The arterial and venous blood is usually conducted into the central vein of each liver lobule by what's known as a liver sinusoid. The central veins then drain into the right and left hepatic veins and this blood eventually leaves through the posterior surface of the liver and opens the lectry into the inferior vena cava. And when looking at the neural regulation of the mesenteric circulation, its control is exclusively due to sympathetic stimulation that constricts mesenteric arterioles and capacitance vessels. The responses are usually mediated by alpha receptors and the beta receptors. And this alpha regulation occurs but less well developed than that in the brain or the kidney. The metabolic principle is the one that is responsible for the auto-regulation. What is functional hyperemia? Two thirds of the blood supply to the gut wall is usually directed to the gut mucosa and only a third goes to the muscle layer. The intestine of blood flow usually increases on food ingestion. That is because of an increased muscular contraction or peristaltic movements. Ingestion of food usually stimulates the secretion or production of an hormone known as gastrin hormone and cholecystokinin. And this absorption of food usually increases intestinal blood flow that is mediated principally by the glucose and the fatty acids and also as a result of the normal metabolic principle. And then we have what's known as the countercurrent blood flow within the villi. These vessels supplying the gastrointestinal villi are usually in close proximity and at the base oxygen is released diffuses from the arterial into the venules. By passing the tip of the villus and in disease conditions, oxygen deficit is results in ischemic death of the villi, short or blunted villi, for example in the cases of Crohn's disease. That's a type of an irritable bowel syndrome. And the net result is a poor absorption of the luminal contents from the gastrointestinal tract. And there's something known as a hepatic acanus and a hepatic lobule. The hepatic acnes is the functional unit of the liver and in our diagram you can see the hepatic acnes being overlaid into lobules and 
The achenes consist of an irregular shaped, roughly ellipsoidal mass of hepatocytes that are aligned around the hepatic arterioles and portovenous just as they are anastomosed into sinusoids. Then on the other hand, the hepatic lobule is a building block of the liver tissue. This building block consists of the hepatic triad and the hepatocytes in the hepatic lobule are arranged in a linear cord between the capillary network and the central vein. And then, blood flow into the portovenous and hepatic arterial system uses various reciprocally in such a way that when blood flow is reduced in one, it increases in the other. The portal system does not autoregulate. As the portovenous pressure and the flow are raised, the resistance either remains constant or decreases. Then the hepatic arterial system also doesn't have this autoregulation. The sympathetic nerves constrict the pre-sinusoidal resistance vessels in the portovenous and the hepatic arterial system, but the neural effects that are mediated by the alpha receptors are more important in this case. And then what are the capacitance vessels? The liver normally contains 15% of the total volume of blood in the whole body. In humans, the liver is such an important blood receiver when compared to the spleen, which doesn't really have uh, that reservoir importance in humans. And about half of the body blood flow can be rapidly expelled in any response of a hemorrhage, for example, hemorrhagic shock. Then let's have a look on this planting circulation. This is a kind of unusual circulation because Instead of the intestine of venous blood returning directly to the heart, most of it is directed to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. The blood flow to the stomach, intestines, pancreas, and the liver is arranged in a series of parallel circuits, and this blood from the intestines and pancreas drains into the liver via what's known as the hepatic portal vein. During the process of fasting, the liver receives about 1300 milliliters per minute. Of blood from the portal vein and 500 milliliters per minute from the hepatic artery. But this portal supply usually increases above these nerve values further after meals. And then the pressure in the portal vein leading to the liver is about 9 millimeters of mercury and the pressure in the hepatic vein is 0 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, this pressure difference shows that the resistance to blood flow through the sinusoids is normally very low and the flow rate through the sinusoids is 1350 milliliters per minute. And then we have uh, one of the most common conditions affecting the liver, that is the cirrhosis of the liver or liver cirrhosis. The damaged liver parenchymal cells are replaced with a fibrous tissue that contracts around the blood vessels impeding blood flow eventually. This results from alcoholism, ingestion of poisons, viral diseases for example infectious hepatitis and also obstruction or any infection of the bile ducts. Another second common cause is uh, known as portal hypertension. Normally the blood pressure within the portal system is between 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury and portal hypertension is defined as when there is a gradient between the portal and systemic blood pressure exceeding 5 millimeters of mercury. The most common cause of this portal hypertension is this condition that we have talked about previously as liver cirrhosis. The blockage of portal system, either by a large clot in the portal vein or its blanches, if sudden, leads to impedance of blood flow from the intestine and the spleen, and the capillary resistance in the intestinal wall is increased to about 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury above the normal values of 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, and the result is an extravasation. This patient will die in a few hours due to excessive loss of fluid from capillaries into the lumen and the walls of the intestines, leading to development of ascites. And other factors that you need to know about the liver are that 50% of all the life that is formed from the body under resting conditions results from the liver. And this is because 
the liver sinusoids are very permeable and allow a ready passage of fluid into the proteins and allow ready passage of fluid and proteins. The liver is capable of remarkably restoring or the hepatic tissue loss as long as the damage is not really complicated by a viral infection or an inflammation. And in these cases, if 70% uh, of the liver is resected, this organ can restore its normal size. And the cofa cells or large phagocytic macrophages that line the hepatic virus sinuses cleanse blood bacteria and in this case the most common bacteria that is cleansed here is the clonic bacilli.